It's rather beautiful to think of a priest being ordained for 49 years. And the thanks that he gives to God, along with the bishop with whom he works. And the bishop here in this diocese, newly installed, is Bishop Anthony Frederick Tonus, who was installed in the most beautiful ceremony in the cathedral church on Monday night, a ceremony that you'll be able to see as you watch CHCH at one o'clock today. And Bishop Tonus helped the people in the Hamilton Diocese, which stretches all the way from Owen Sound in the north, right down to Hamilton and to Brantford and to Oakville, some 300,000 and more Catholic people with all their non-Catholic friends and relatives. And one of the parishes, one of the best known parishes, is St. Anne's Church in Hamilton that you see here where little children were baptized, received their first Holy Communion, confirmed, and so many young men went to the priesthood to praying with priests and pastors through the years. And that's why I'd like you to meet the present pastor, great friend of everyone in the diocese, Monsignor Charles McCulgan, who started off life not in the Hamilton Diocese, but uh, where? Creole, Quebec, small village near Ottawa. Q-U-Y-O-N, Quillon, Quebec. It's near... Near Hull, I on see. the Quebec side uh, of the Ottawa River. It's an Indian name, I think, both to mean muddy water. <laughs> and there's a little Quill River that ran into the Ottawa River. And I guess that's where they got the name of their little village. And there were 11 children. 11 children in the family, yes. How did they uh, divide, boys and girls? There were, there were three boys and eight girls. Oh, I see. Well, you didn't have much housework as no, a boy. We, we looked after the cows and the, <laughs> and the, and the girls looked after the housekeeping and the, the uh, cooking and caring for things around the house. I see. And your bilingual days started a little bit there, but not too much. Not it's too much. an Irish settlement. Yes, it was an Irish settlement. Three quarters of the people at that time were of uh, Irish extraction, O'Reilly's and Muldoon's and Kelly's uh -huh. and Moyle's. But then now, I think at this time, uh, nearly 50 years, 60 years later, I think it's probably more than close to half, maybe. Uh, and where did you fit in the family? Were you there? I was the, uh, the fourth. There were three girls and then myself. And today, how many are living? There's still uh, six of us alive. One brother and uh, four sisters have died. I see. And you yourself then left Quillon. You went to school, grade school there. I went to grade school, but we had no college, no high school. You see. So I have to leave. We have to go away. And I went to St. Jerome's College in Kitchener. Oh. I spent seven years. I took my high school and then uh, two years of philosophy in preparation uh, for the seminary training. Uh, the good resurrectionist father. That's right, the resurrectionist father. Remember some yep. of the old names? Oh, yes, all? Father Benninger and Father uh, Fred Arnold, and, and Father uh, Mike Kiefer, Father Charlie Kiefer, Father mm -hmm. uh, Fisher. Wonderful man, real dedicated man. They're, they lived a very well disciplined life and they were completely dedicated to teaching. It was a boarding school, so you had we had about yeah. 7,500 boarders plus. The day scholar, too, from there. And in God calling you to the priesthood, can you trace uh, his whisper or his call at any stage? Well, right from the beginning, from when I was a child, eight to nine, but well, starting to go to Mass. But it's always appealed to me very much because I went to Mass every day. And, uh, of course, uh, my mother was a very devout lady, a wonderful little mother, and very devout, deep faith. And my father wasn't home too much. He was worked up in the... Uh, in the bush, he was a lumberman and became superintendent for a lumbering firm. So we would not see him very much during the year. Maybe he'd be home for two months, two or three months of the year. But mother was the, kind of the backbone of the whole family, and she was very devout. 
regular, and of course, we went to Mass every day. Isn't that and, something? And, and, uh, and nearly the whole family, uh, I served on the altar. But of course, and then on Sundays, when we went to church, it took two pews because it was 11 plus my mother and dad, so the 13 were. And she wasn't, uh, she did not live for your ordination. No, she, she died the year, in fact, uh, I entered the seminary as spokesman in September in the Grand, and I, she died in the 21st of September, so I went into the Grand Seminary on October the 5th, oh, having lost her. She knew you were going. She knew I was going, and with the uh, uh, fact that I was going to be a priest, that, that, that satisfied her. But she would always ask, never try to uh, force me, but I would always ask me, what are you going to do when you grow up? I'm going to be a priest. Oh, sir, that's fine. I'm happy, you know. <laughs> Were there other vocations? Well, I have a sister who became a, a nun. She's uh, 11 years younger than I am, and she entered the uh, convent in uh, St. Joseph's in uh, Sault Ste. Marie Diocese. She became the mother general and was the mother general for 12 years there. Uh, and is she uh, still in Sudbury? She's now in pastoral care. She finished her administration, and she's in pastoral oh, care at the Sudbury General Hospital. How no. old is she? She's 62. Oh, still 62, young. 63, I guess. She's 63. Uh -huh. yeah. The only reason I ask your age is I can't believe it. <laughs> but God has been good to me, and I guess he's preserved me. You're 75? 75. 75 last April, yeah. That is a great blessing. That's it, yes. Yeah. God has been pretty good too. Pretty you. good. There's nothing extraordinary, no, no extraordinary debility. Yeah. Over the years, I had a back problem 60 years ago, a big operation on my back and had a fusion. That kind of laid me low for a year, but uh, since then, I've been pretty good, really. You, you know. almost have a soldier bearing. I have you. to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to spray, and you know. how did uh, Hamilton get so lucky? Because really, you uh, might have been with the Pembroke, Pembroke Diocese. Well, yes, I started off in Pembroke, and my first year in the Grand Seminary, I was uh, along to Pembroke Diocese. But there were so many priests in uh, Pembroke, they had two priests for 100 families, whereas Hamilton, there was a shortage, and Father Harold Smith and Father uh, Tom Brennan were at that time in the Grand Seminary, and they said, well, why not join uh, Hamilton? You know all the priests. Uh, went to St. Jerome. I said, gee, would they take me? Sure. So I wrote to the bishop, uh, Bishop McNally, and uh, the secretary was uh, Father Vince Shea, and Father Vince Shea told him, this, is, uh, this young fellow, he's, uh, he's a good athlete and he's a good, upstanding young man. We can use him. So he said, sign him up. <laughs> Signed up then for and, uh, where and who ordained you? Uh, bishop uh, uh, Patrick P. Ryan, the Bishop of Pembroke, because my little village, uh, even though it's in Quebec, it belonged to the Pembroke Diocese in Ontario. That they had a little section along the Ottawa River that belonged to uh, Pembroke, and he ordained me. And he told me that uh, you know he could stay, I could stay in Pembroke, but he said, "Well, more work up in Hamilton. Go right ahead. You have my blessing." Oh, isn't that yeah. beautiful? It's a, and. Uh, when you think of it, it the, this today is the exact day that you were ordained. Exactly, the 24th of June, yeah. Yeah. It was the Feast of St. John the Baptist. Oh, It I was see. on a Monday, yeah. I can remember it well. Yeah. Oh, on Monday. On a Monday, I yeah. See. I had assisted Bishop Ryan in ordaining another priest the day before on the Sunday, a Bishop, uh, mm -hmm. Father Merchant. And he went to the West, to Saskatoon, I think. The next day he was... We will be together especially on this day of celebration for Monsignor Charles McCaugan, thanking God for 49 years of his priesthood. And how many years at St. Anne? 48 years at St. Anne. And pastor? Uh, 36 years, 11, uh, 12 years as assistant and 36 years as a uh, pastor. And uh, one of your bishops, along with Bishop McNally and Bishop Redding, Bishop Ryan was Bishop Redding. Quite, uh, he went in the seminary with him. You no, he he just gone into the seminary uh, when I came to Saint Anne, and uh, he was uh, went through Saint Anne School and then Cathedral High School. That was my, his favorite parish. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, he always came back, and he always came back for the forty hours of devotion, the closing, and always came back for the for the uh, uh, feast of Saint Anne on the closing of the novena. And when you look at uh, Bishop Redding and think of his rather young life, because he was only, what, 50? 50, 58, 59, 59, I guess. 59, 59. He, he died. Mm -hmm. How much he enjoyed both in Anne's parish plus his years as a priest mm -hmm. in the Hamilton Diocese and then guided as chancellor and auxiliary by Bishop Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, he certainly would be pleased today. 
celebrating with you and Kevin. Yes, he loved And him. also, when you look back, not only to your fellow priests and bishops like Bishop Ryan, Bishop Redding, now Bishop Tonus, why you think naturally of the good man which your mother gave you life under God, your father. How old would your father have been at this time? Uh, at this time, I think he would probably be about 45 or 46. He lived to be 81. Um, he uh, lived a very uh, open life. He was in the bush all his life, practically. Uh -huh. And uh, walked even after he retired. He was a consultant to a lumbering company for a number of years, and he'd walk every day two, three, four, five miles. Was he a taller man than you? Yes, he was about five foot ten. And he okay. told me when he was 18, he weighed about 190. And a real body working in the, in the uh, forest, okay. you know, bush, uh, outdoor life. But he normally weighed about 170 in his later life. And then in your own family, you said there were 11, including yourself. Yes. And who would they be roughly in that picture? Is this the complete family? This is the complete family, yes. What are their names? There's uh, Bessie, and then I think myself, and Geraldine, and then uh, Arnold, and then uh, uh, I think Catherine, and uh, Edward, uh, Margaret, and... Uh, on this side, Noreen at the bottom, Sister Noreen, she's among the convent, uh -huh. and uh, Anne, and did I mention Eddie? I just mentioned no. Edward, uh -huh. at the top there, uh -huh. and uh, I think I got them all, okay? That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. And uh, when was that picture taken? Is that, that picture better? was taken in 1940. Nine, oh, I think I it was. And, uh, I think that was the time uh, after my father died, and yeah. we—that's the first time we all got together yeah. for yeah. a meeting. I think we took. And then in your parish work at St. Anne, both with the school and the choir, like this group here now, they're. Uh, this group, yeah, this 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 choir. They formed the choir, very very excellent choir. The, Mr. Pinto is a. Beautiful voice, and he's the director of the choir. And there's a Gordon Okawara. He just uh, became a medical doctor last Thursday. In fact, we oh, go today. He got his degree at the Toronto University. Are some of them going to be singing at the, uh, this, this choir? Will be singing at the on Sunday mass. afternoon at three oh. o'clock mass. Are you a singer too? No, I can carry a tune, but I'm not uh, any great shape. Except you get into all country music or something like that. <laughs> And when Singer Angler, you were with him, uh, he started to walk his past. Greatest speech well. I ever knew, yes. He was there. He was in St. Anne's for 40 years, and he was my uh, my pastor for the 11 years, and uh, uh, we got along great. He was a, a prodigious worker. Uh, he was everything in the city as far as the church was the head of the school board for 25 years, and he was the head of the Widow's Pension Board, and yeah. still uh, Holy Name Society president. And uh, quite a um, holy Careful. Very holy man. Very holy man. Spent an hour with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament every day. All like Bishop every Shane, day. Right? Yeah, every day. Never yeah. missed. And uh, just a dedicated man. He loved people and uh, worked his right. head off. And he still remembered and people I still have masses said for him after four Well, that's beautiful that Monsignor was blessed in his apprenticeship, I guess you Excellent. would call it, Excellent. with a good past like Monsignor Englert. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, as you look at a place where you have worked, and uh, what was the first church, actually? What year was that built, the first little I church? I think it was 1906 uh, the church was built. And then in the first And this present church is... In 1924. And that's on the corner of Sherman? Sherman and Barton, yeah. I see. And it's still it's in pretty good excellent, excellent shape. It'll hold a thousand people. It's the second largest city uh, church in the oh, city. Oh, in fact, maybe equal to the cathedral now that they cut out some of it. Yes, now. yes, yes. But, and it's... Got great facilities. It's got a sloping floor, so everybody can see the altar. Oh, yeah. And, uh, it, and it, your parish has changed, like many parishes. From was it originally Irish or well, Irish, Irish English, English Scotch? But uh, that uh, that uh, hasn't changed too much. But the numbers have changed. Uh, we're, we've know. gone down from eleven hundred to about uh, eight hundred. And families. this, of course, is why Saint Anne's Church is named Saint Anne, the Mother of uh, Mary, Mary, the Mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you have promoted greatly the July the 26th. That's movie. right. We have an arena starting on July 18th and closing on the 26th. How many years have you promoted we that? We started that. Well, I, but it's been going on since 1907, I guess. But 
just by the priests that were there. But then I got Father Lardy back in 1950 to start coming in for nine days. And ever since then, we've had a preacher in. Uh, Father Martin Foley was one that gave yeah. it two or three times. And yeah. Brother, Brother Bennett, I think it was another, yeah. the Redemptor's father. And yeah. you're, uh, as pastor, you worked in the schools uh, a great deal through the years. And every this is part of, uh, part of the school, yes. We used to go into the schools every, at least a one, two days every week at least. Who and is then this, this was after four. This is a group of uh, softball players. So you had extramural activities after school. I used what to, year might that be? 1940s, that was. Oh, you were just starting. Just starting out well. 36 then. Uh, Rita Staunton is there. She's one of the teachers. Oh, I see. Albert and Mary. And then other school this is, children. This is the graduation class. I think this was maybe between 40, around 43 or 44. Uh, oh. a grade 8, they graduated and they had a, a picture taken, I think, in front of the church. So, Mothers and grandmothers. <laughs> what about your fellow priests, uh, like Father Bernie Cox? You're, you're close to all the priests. Yes, I know. we've had, yes, of course. Uh, Father Blake Ryan was a buddy for 40 years. He just died on March 14th of this year, shortly after our beloved bishop. And then Monsignor Cox has been a buddy of mine. We've uh, worked together and played yeah. together and been on the school board together as trustees for, he was 25 years. I was yeah. 22 years on the school board. We pray for him a lot. His health is bad. He's yeah. had rheumatoid arthritis. And although I, the last couple of days, I see some improvement for the first time. Oh, we'll pray and yes, please that he may be able to get out and around again. He's, he's had a real rough time. So a lot of suffering. And in the course of those years, the uh, St. Anne Parish have come priests? There's, there's been 26 ordained from St. Anne's, I think, and about 30 sisters from St. Anne. And one bishop. And one bishop, Bishop Redding, yes, uh -huh. for whom we're very proud of his yeah. exploits and his and how many sisters did you say? About 30 or 32. I see. Over there. And I suppose like most parishes, Matt, that number has decreased. Decreased, yes. We only had, we had, the last one we had was uh, Father Mattis a year ago last May. I see. And, and any sisters? And well? no sisters have entered in the last yeah. five years, I guess. I see. But uh, no, that has gone down just like every place else. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And as you look back over your... Uh, Years forty nine as a priest. What would could you could you say one or two thoughts come to you, whether minor or big moments? Well, the of course the biggest moment is your ordination, your first mass. There's just nothing can compare with that. You're just walking on air, right? okay. and uh, and being able to say mass every day. Uh, that's a tremendous joy. That is the heart of a priest to okay. be able to say mass. And one of the great uh, events we had was the uh, establishing night adoration when we had men spend an hour, take turns an hour from 10 o'clock at night until 6 o'clock on Sunday morning. We went, that went on for 20 years and we had as high as 222 uh, men spending uh, the night as uh, night watchers with our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. What years were they? That was 1950 to 1970. Nice. Yes. And we are in the turn also established about 10 other parishes in the city. Uh -huh. I happened to be the chaplain for uh -huh. night adoration, and uh -huh. we established them in different places, Simcoe and up north, and Kitchener, and uh, Cathedral, uh -huh. and so on. But that is, that at the end of 70, it kind of dwindled down, got small, so we really had to stop it then. But for 20 years, the prayers and graces good. were tremendous. Yeah. And when you think yourself of the gratitude you have to God, what do you think helps people love God most today? Some are so upset after Vatican II, or well, of course, if they if they, uh, they get the closer they get to our Divine Lord, or the uh, the more frequent in the reception of the sacraments, or the devotion to our Blessed Mother, if they keep the basics, they they'll draw they'll, they'll be drawn back. Just can't help but do that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, and the closeness to our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament he is the source of everything and mm -hmm. grace, strength, courage, comfort, all, everything you need. As long as we go back to Him, as long as we stay close to Him, mm -hmm. all of these things will straighten out. I, I don't think anybody would be unable to meet uh, the challenges that are presented today. Mm 